Good morning, everybody. I thought I'd go ahead and do a full garden tour for July. So grab a cup of coffee and join me for visiting some of my gardens. Starting off in my front garden bed, you'll see most of the things that have changed. It's just things have gotten bigger, have gotten more blooms, gotten prettier, those sort of things. I don't have really any new flowers planted, but let's go ahead and walk through. My clematis is still hanging on. I actually saw a bloom the other day. It must be gone by now. The phlox kind of looks bad. I think there's a lot of ants in it, so I'm going to take a look at that situation here soon. But I wanted to show this. This is the first time I've ever grown this. It is a hyacinth runner bean. It is so pretty, and it's about to put off some beans, so if anybody wants any seeds, let me know. The Chinese floor marble came up again in this area, which I don't want it in this area, but at the same time, I go ahead and let it because the azalea isn't blooming anymore anyway, and the yellow color is over here. Caleb said it seems like they are segregating themselves as far as the colors go because there used to be a mix of all the colors over there, and like the yellow has been kind of shut out. So the Rebecca is finally starting to bloom. Beautiful, sweet little blossoms. It's getting really big, actually. I'm pretty happy about that. There's some four marbles here too. I'm gonna actually rip those out because they're overshadowing the other plants that I wanna see. The snapdragon down here is still shooting off some color, but it looks mostly dead now. And I'm just gonna let the seed pods go. That way it readily self seeds again. We also have a self seeded zinnia here that came up, probably a polar bear, but we'll find out. The El Dorado zinnia, it bloomed and it is just the funnest little peach orange color. So I've been enjoying that. And there's another self-seeded zinnia here, which again, I probably polar bear, but I don't know for sure. Again, snapdragons, it looks like it's pushing out some new growth. So I'll probably get a couple more blooms. I've got a bunch of random sunflowers, which is kind of overshadowing my dahlia here, but I'm gonna let that happen as well. This should be the Cafe LA dahlia. And this dahlia is the same, but it's a little bit more behind. I think it's starting to get too overshadowed by another big batch of Rebecca. The Chinese four marbles did start putting on their show, which I absolutely love. And my hydrangea has a total of two blossoms this year. One mini blossom and this one. Last year, this thing was absolutely covered, but the weird, harsh um cold temps that came in towards the in spring kind of nipped it so that's why that looks like that this osteospermum i was actually a little worried about it because it kind of got um it petered out essentially it stopped shooting blooms it got really small but obviously it came back to life and it's very pretty another set of the hyacinth beans i think i accidentally over planted these because I was like they're not coming up I'll just throw more seeds in because I really want to see them so now I've got this other random patch but I'm kind of interested to see what it does so far it's grabbing on to things in the area such as my whirling butter gar gara whirling butterflies gara which I really love that plant it's so wispy and fun the little calabrocas in that pot are doing okay. They need a little bit more water since they are in a pot, but we are working on getting some drip lines so that stops being an issue. This Illumina Zinnia, this pink Illumina Zinnia, my goodness, I love this Zinnia. It's so big, it's so bushy, it's so prolific. I'm big cutting blossoms off of this repeatedly and it just keeps shooting out more. I love it. <clears throat> the star flower here, it looks okay. Um, I wanted to grow it because I'd never grown it before. I can't say it's my favorite plant, but it is cute. This Gallardia, I know I said I didn't care for it last year, but now that it came back, I'm kind of really happy that it did. It's such a bright, pretty ball of yellow flowers that the pollinators just absolutely love and I'm so happy it came back by itself. 
the salvia here I did cut it back it is reblooming it does look really rough though a lot of my plants actually look pretty rough I think I need some sort of special fertilizer but I haven't nailed it down to what I need also I found out these these are actually more rubecchia that self-seeded I'm letting them go for now but I'm probably going to dig them up and give them to friends who would like some I still actually have a columbine that's going which I think is pretty interesting and these are some grape hyacinths that aren't done yet so I just let them go I did move these bachelor buttons over here so I had these growing under the Japanese maple tree and they just they weren't getting any sun like you can tell how leggy and sparse they are so I moved them and I knew that it might be an issue so I did lose a couple over here but it looks like these are coming back because I see little blossoms starting. So hopefully they'll get some flowers on them. They'll self seed and then they'll come up and take over this area, which would be cute. This also looks like a zinnia. I didn't notice that before. This pot with the double petunia, the gomfrina, and the sweet potato vine is so pretty. It's extremely purple and I thought that'd be overkill but I actually really love it especially in comparison to the Merlot Dianthesis. I'm gonna swing to this side. This is a butterfly weed that I got at a native plant sale and it is another really good friend to bees and pollinators. And I kind of actually like the orange pop in here too. And orange is not one of my favorite colors. Man. <laughs> so this is another funny thing. So I have all these poppies that I winter sowed. And you can tell they're, they're pretty much done. But the coolest thing is this one section of poppies was three different types of poppies. They were supposed to be a creamy peony white which is like a double poppy and they were this section here but this section was like a single purple peony and this one which just finished blooming was actually a double cream purple poppy so I'm looking forward to harvesting those pods and saving off those seeds because now I have three different varieties of poppies going I also fully plan on letting them just drop their seeds and spread themselves in this area anyway. My Gerber daisy here is also doing really well. It keeps pushing out blooms. Gerber daisy is a really good plant to make sure you keep up on deadheading because if you deadhead, it will keep pushing out new blooms thinking it needs to go to seed. It needs to go to seed. So I've been trying to more readily actually cut these and enjoy them in the house. And I've been getting continual blooms. This carnation I bought on clearance, I thought it wasn't going to bloom anymore, but look at that sweet peach color. I am very thrilled with that. The mum's looking really good. It is starting to fall apart. I have not yet made a decision on if I'm going to do like the Chelsea chop or not, so I've kind of left it alone. This is another zinnia I thought it would not care for, but these colors, especially right by my front door, love it. This is the chrysanthemum zinnia mix. So it looks like I got pink and orange to take off. And I like how they're creeping over the stairs. So it's kind of like a, a secret garden to come to my front door. I just really like that. The sunflowers that I'm pretty sure Chipmunk planted are actually doing pretty well. They're probably gonna flower here soon. The lavender I planted over here looks really good. And actually the gardenia that I was pretty sure was gonna die. <laughs> it was really bad um, it bloomed out leafed out really well I'm excited to see if a bloom actually happens my little pot of pansies here is finally done so I'm actually going to rip this out and I haven't decided if I'm gonna pot up another pot or not and then I have this one I did try to replant so this is some uh, butterfly weed I got from somebody else and it does not look like it transplanted. So I'm probably gonna rip that out, go get some different annual plants just to make this pretty. I did get a hibiscus, which is this really bold red and orange, which is kind of fun. My dichondra is still doing pretty well, finally draping. And I got this Calibroco on clearance 
and it is really sweet tropical colors. So it looks like I'm going more of a tropical vibe. Moving over here, this is another zinnia. I do not think that I planted this one. So this must be a self-seeded from last year, or maybe I did plant it. I'm not really sure, but it is about to get some blooms, so I will find out. Looks like there's another one here too. Some more volunteer sunflowers, just letting those go. My queen lime zinnia. It finally bloomed. It's so pretty. I would say though, the only thing I'm a little disappointed is the blossoms are pretty small. You know, when you have a zinnia like this, that like fills my hand and then I come over here and it's so tiny, it's a little less um, exciting, but it is a very beautiful color. So I'm so very happy with it. This osteospermum looks like it's doing well too. It's pushing out more blooms. So that's great to see. This pot looks a little rough. I have not been keeping up with the deadheading like I should. The Bordeaux Petunia looks a little leggy. I probably need to come by and trim it up so it can re-bush out. Same with the Verbenia. I'm not deadheading it well enough, so it's kind of losing its vigor. But at least the Gomfrina is getting bigger and the, and the uh, Sweet Potato Vine looks good. These sunflowers, I'm still getting a couple here and there, but otherwise these are done. I'm not going to harvest those seeds because it's just a standard sunflower and I have a plenty of those. Uh, so I'm leaving them up for bird feed. My ajuga looks nice and full and it's still blooming every now and then. And the lilac as well. I still have not pruned it. I still need to do that. I can tell all the new growth that's pushing out and it is pushing out a few blossoms here and there. But I think I'm just going to not do it this year, but next year for sure, I need to do a rejuvenating prune where I just chop the whole thing down and let it re-come up more vigorous than ever. Blue corn flowers, they're pretty much done. I get a blossom every now and then, but again, they look really rough. I'm not sure if the mushroom soil was overly salty for them or something because I kind of sprinkled on top of all of my garden beds before I mulched. But the soil I have here is so terrible. I thought this has to be better than nothing. So we'll see. I'm going to let things go and see what happens. I've got some more volunteer sunflowers coming up here. I've got, look how happy they are. Little bees. Got a bunch of different ones. This one's really pretty. And here we go. I'm kind of sad they're not as tall as they were last year. Again, I think that's because of the way I grew them inside and they just got pot bound before they got to take off. So it's probably my fault, but I'm gonna try again. These apple blossom snapdragons, they're so pretty. So I'm definitely letting these go because I want them to self seed again there. This is another Dahlia. It's a secret one from a friend. So I'm waiting to see what that looks like. My flocks, it looks like it's pushed out new growth. I was kind of hoping it'd push out new flowers, but it's not, but that's okay. These pansies are still doing strong, well, violas. And I'm assuming that's because they don't get that much sunlight, so they must stay nice and shaded. So I'm gonna let them go until they're done. And I also still have this Nemesia in here. I like how it kind of peeks through the sunflowers of the color. Oh, the mum here also looks really good. It is not um, falling apart or getting as big as the one over there. Uh, so I'm probably definitely not going to cut that one. And I think that'll be so great for fall. Japanese maple still looking as lovely as ever. He also definitely needs a prune. My, my uncle, who is a landscaper, sort of gave me a crap about it. Said I need to prune him up which I don't disagree, but I just love his little blanket-like state. I don't know, it's just so, it reminds me of like a secret fort that I could go into there and hide and no one could find me. I should probably try that, that'd be really cool. Anyway, so behind the mum, we have this absolutely beautiful mallow. I am so glad I grabbed this on clearance. I wasn't sure I had any interest in it, but now that I have one, I'm, I just love it. It's so cool. This daylily blooming, threw out some bloom stalks, which is great. 
And something else I'm still excited to see, this is that Thumbergia, Black Eyed Susan Vine. It lived and it's finally grabbing this pole. So I'm hoping it'll go up the pole and it will have these beautiful blush pink flowers. So I hope I get to see that soon. This pot of Portulaca is throwing out some really beautiful colors. And this is that Dahlia that actually self-seeded from last year. I didn't even realize, I'm glad I left it. So I'm interested to see what it looks like. And the butterfly bush. It has bloomed out. It smells absolutely lovely. And it is putting on its beautiful display, feeding all the pollinators. And I just adore this plant. I know that it's not great as far as invasive species, but it's one of my favorite plants and one that I wanted as soon as I had a garden I could plant it in and I'm not ready to give it up. So I just make sure I cut it back every year and try to take the spent blooms to decrease it. And I have plenty of other plants that are native for pollinators. So that makes me happy. Can I just say how much joy this space brings me and especially standing from this perspective and looking in at the absolute jungle that is my garden just just lifts me up and I come out here pretty much every day to just sit back and enjoy my my peaceful space and finally one of the giant sunflowers bloomed and it is making the bees absolutely happy so there's a couple up there right now I did have to um, end up fencing my garden I'm not using anything permanent so I will show you that in a couple minutes for now, let's go ahead and take a look. So my baskets of strawberries are re-berrying out. So I actually have a couple good looking berries on there. So that's exciting. I planted corn for the first time ever. So I've got about six or seven seeds going. Actually, I have eight seeds going. Obviously, two look better than the rest. So I'm interested to see what it's like growing corn and how it looks. My raspberry bushes are doing pretty well. They also look like they're suffering from some deficiency, so I need to figure that out. But the amount of raspberries I've been able to pull off here, I mean, there is probably four I could pull off today. And I try to pull them a little early so I can beat the chipmunk, because I'm constantly in competition for my fruit with the chipmunk. But I also really enjoy the chipmunk's presence, so it's my own fault. This time that I planted is getting sweet little flowers. The bee balm, while it doesn't look super spectacular now, I mean, some of these do, this was really fun. I'm really glad that I was able to plant these and watch them grow, especially after last year when I thought I got the wrong seeds or something. This year they were really fun. And these strawberries are getting blossoms. These are sweet little pink blossoms so I'm interested to try that fruit all right I'm kind of going along the front instead of the beds itself so let's go in this direction we'll start with the lettuce patch so obviously there is no more <laughs> lettuce to be had but I can't bring myself to quite rip them out yet because they're just so tall and beautiful I know lettuce shouldn't actually be considered a plant but I just love it. And like when I let it go to flower like this, all these little seeds here, all of those lettuce seeds, will just sprinkle themselves and reseed themselves. And that's sort of why I let it go because then every year I have a fun mix of whatever decides to blossom. I do still have kale going back here. I've got three nice trees of that. I've had some white fly damage, um, some cabbage worms like that. I kind of just ripped off the lower branches, threw away the ones that looked yucky, and I'm just kind of keeping an eye on it. I mean, I'm still getting damage, you can see, but I've got so much kale, I don't really care that much. And it's not like I use kale every day, so. Arugula. <laughs> I also cannot bring myself to rip this one out. It is so huge and so blankety 
uh, after just having two little plants in this garden and seeing what it exploded into, I was just beside myself with joy. And to be honest, I don't even care that it's flowering. I'm still just eating it. It still tastes to me just fine. I'm just throwing it in some salads. It may be stronger. It may have a stronger like peppery taste, but for me, that's kind of fine actually. So I've just still been eating it and it's, it's great. I'm definitely going to grow this every year because I am so ecstatic with it. I have a volunteer sunflower back there and I have this sweet little pot of snapdragons again. So I've got the apple blossom and the black prince back there. And that's turned out to be one of my favorite pots too on my table here the swiss giant pansies are still doing really well so i've been letting them go i've got another set of black prince snapdragons here that have been lovely and this little pot of portulaca that's self-seeded in my garden beds i just kind of tucked in here and now it's putting on quite a little tropical display this is, I believe, the happy hour mix. I usually buy that every year from Stauffer's. I did not this year buy it. I only got yellows. Um, I didn't know what color it was, but the yellows are really pretty too. So I'm hoping this one keeps self-seeding. Back here, I've got the pot of calendula, which looks rough as well. Next year, I'll probably rip apart that pot and do something else, but I just let it go. All of those self-seeded from last year. I didn't plant any of it. That is full of onions, and they're actually starting to die back a bit, so it might be soon time to harvest. I've got this wild squash going on, which I believe is a butternut. I'm not sure because I didn't plant it, and it might be some sort of hybrid, but I'm definitely going to let that go. Before, I would not have let this stuff go because we used to have to mow. Now that I mulch the whole thing, it's... I, I don't care. I mean, I can let that go and walk around it because I don't need to try and bow around it or anything. So I'm leaving it go. This calendula, all again, self-seeded from last year. I think it's really interesting how some of them are like really orange and then the rest are yellow. Obviously, it's like not a different seed or anything, but it's what it did. I've got dill here, which again, self-seeded. And I'm going to let it do the same thing. The blossoms are really great for pollinators, especially butterflies that like this umbrella-like um, flower. And my friend taught me how to make my own bouquets a little bit more. And using the leaves from dill gives it such a romantic, like, wispy look. So I've been using a lot of that. Not so much for eating, <laughs> but uh, this is a volunteer sunflower. I did not plant it, but I'm going to let it go. Interested to see what it turns into. I've got this beautiful nasturtium. The orchid cream. I have my first artichoke. See it in there? I'm only growing those for the flowers, so I'm not interested in picking it. The chamomile is still going, and I actually have a borage. That should get really nice little blue flowers that I can pick and then I can eat. They have apparently like a cucumber-like taste. And this is just a jar full of carrot flowers from the, the carrots I harvested. I was hoping if I stuck it in a jar of water it would just keep going because the bees and pollinators really love that as well. Going to this first bed. I already talked about the corn. I have some potatoes that I actually harvested and I'm trying an experiment with replanting them. This one looks like it's not going to come back. So I might just cut the stalk. Same with this one. But that one actually looks like it came back to life a bit. So I'm letting them go for now just to see how that works. And then, like I said, sunflowers. I can't wait for the rest of these to bloom. I'm interested if they're all going to be yellow or if I'm gonna get some different colors. My beets here are coming up. Um, they're not doing super great. I figured though that they would do the best in this area because it's warm and beets are more of a cold crop, but they're shaded absolutely by my tunnel and the sunflowers. The bull's blood seems to have the weakest germination for me. Um, I don't know if my seeds are older or like they lost germination or something but these are just like a um 
I don't even remember the brand. It's just like a regular burpee beet seed. And I still have a couple from my first batch. I also think I have a bunch of random peppers that are growing from seeds that were in here being composted. I've ripped some of them out, but I seem to have quite a few peppers going and I'm just letting them go. This pot of Cosmos is just beautiful. They're so fluffy and full and just the pollinators again, love it. I'm really into planting things for pollinators. There is still artichokes under here, but they're obviously not doing so great because the uh, Cosmos are kind of taking them over. In here, I've got this beast of a zucchini. It's actually started climbing out of my bed, which is kind of nice because it's easier to harvest the zucchini then. And I'm basically harvesting a zucchini every day, if not more. My eggplant here seems to be doing better. Obviously it has sustained really severe uh, flea beetle damage. I did plant some radishes around them because I heard that that helps and it looks like they have also destroyed those. So we'll see. My green bean patch is doing really well. I'm harvesting handfuls of green beans probably every other day. So that's been great. My poblano I moved over here is taking off. I'm finally getting some fruit. So can't wait for that. This is a fennel that I got. I planted it in the garden to try the fennel bulb and also just love it. I've got this massive okra plant here. I've harvested two okras off of it, but I really only grew this because it was free. Someone gave it to me and the flowers of okra are just beautiful. Looks like there's one on the other side, I'll show you. Calendula, this blue basil. Uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, Jess from Roots and Refuge Farm, posted a how to make basil tea. And she said this one sort of has a vanilla note to it. So I'm actually think I'm gonna try that. The Dr. Witchy's yellow here, doing really well. I actually have this absolutely massive, like that thing is bigger than my hand. And some of them are finally starting to blush. So hopefully I'll get to try that really soon. This is another Dr. Witchy's yellow that I am house sitting for a friend while they're on vacation. It's doing quite well. It's obviously not doing as well as mine in the bed because it's in a pot and it looks like I need to top up some more soil. But other than that, I mean, it's pushing out fruit. It's not, oh, that one has blossom end run. I'll have to put some more fertilizer on for him. Most of the fruit don't have blossom end run though. And he's getting some nice sizes. So, oops, sorry. Hopefully I'll be able to help with that. And before I go too far this side, green stock. So, this was like my cold crop green stock with my veggies in it. I do have another nasturtium in here, which is beautiful. It looks like some radishes are sowed down here. I don't think I did that. I'm late unless I drop them. I put in some more lettuce seeds. Some of them are germinating. The kale in here is still doing great. I have radish seeds up here. I have some beets coming up here and here. I need to re-sow the beets. The carrots I'm gonna wait on. This is another borage because I thought the one over there didn't bloom. I've got some green beans in here, which I really enjoy the way the green beans are growing in the green stock. They're easier to harvest, but at the same time, they're kind of like laying over. So I kind of need to come up with some sort of plant support. I know they sell them, but I don't really want to buy them because they're kind of expensive. So see what I can DIY before I do that. And then I have my spoon tomato, which is doing really well. Look at these cute little fruits though. I'm just, I'm just wooed by the fact that it's tiny. It's like miniature fruit. I haven't been able to try one yet, but I will be able to soon. I've got a couple in the house ripening. This Serrano pepper, I think it absolutely hates its life. It has not changed size at all. Um, and I don't really need another pepper plant. This is more of an experiment. So to me, this says I probably won't ever grow peppers in here. 
So, and I have one last carrot that I haven't harvested yet because he was doing quite well. But I will say the carrots and the green stock were my best carrots this year. And I think that's because you have a forced seed separation. You cannot grow more than three to four carrots in a pocket, especially depending on the variety. So I think that's why they did better. And I just need to be much more heartless and ruthless and seed my, <laughs> separate my carrot seedlings more. I've got this clematis back here still going. I did throw in a sweet pea. I just wanted to see if it would grow. Uh, it didn't, so, <laughs> oh well. I've got blueberries here. I have a little lavender there. Some cosmos here, which you can tell the difference in size between those and those beasts over there. I've got another blueberry here. I've got two dahlias over here. They are white keepers. I still have the Astra Cream sunflowers. This one looks a lot worse. Oh, it looks like someone ate it too. But I'm hoping what happens is they just drop their seeds and then I can get some more. I've got a zinnia growing here, which I believe is another queen lime. And I have some marigolds I grew from seed, which I thought they were sunflowers when I planted them, but I'm kind of glad actually they're marigolds. My other blueberry bush, this is the only one that produced berries for me this year. And this is more of the bee's friend that I tried to save and it it's not happy. Oh well. I intended on putting pine mulch here just to create like separation. I just couldn't get my hands on any and I had spent a lot of money as it was gardening this year. So I just threw down this free hay that I had and that creates my separation, creates a mulch, helps maintain moisture for the plants. And next year, hopefully I'll get my hands on better mulch. This is also new. I got this from Tractor Supply. It's one solid bucket that I put water in and one like colander like bucket. And when I harvest things such as these beets, I can wash them off out here before I take them in the house so I don't bring all that dirt in the house. So that's been really great. I'm hoping to make some beet tofu stir fry this week. All right, middle of the bed. So here is ropes and tomatoes. I think they're gonna blush here really soon with some sweet calendulas. Same for this side. They're even bigger. This one did get topped by a deer uh, right here. But I figure I have so many tomatoes, it's fine. If that was the one they wanted to top, that's fine. Another calendula. This one is that fun orange color. This is my Brandywine Black. It's doing really well. It's getting decent fruit as well, but none ready just yet. I also have regular basil there. Here's the okra plant again. And look, here's the flower. How pretty. Another fennel. Also, these are onion seeds. And these have been one of my favorite flowers in the garden. They're just, they add such an air of whimsy with their fun little ball flowers. And again, pollinators just absolutely love these allium flowers. So I'm really glad that this happened. Definitely hoping to be able to do this every year because I don't really care for onions anyway. And these are so pretty. Rest of my green beans on this side as well. You'll notice I have some here climbing. I thought I bought all bush varieties of green beans, but apparently some of the green beans I'm growing are actually a pole variety. So I tried to give them some poles. They're climbing up that. They're using the zucchini, which is fine with me. Um, but I have not really ever liked green beans, but I now like green beans specifically from the garden. On this side, we have another calendula, another um, blue basil, and a regular basil. This basil over here is much bigger. I think it gets more sunlight. This is my Black Beauty tomato, which it's getting most of its fruit on this side. I think that's so cool. There's the basil from this side. And this is my Cherokee Purple, which is the other one that's just producing these 
massive tomatoes. So I'm really excited to get one of those. This is my Dahlia patch that I'm trying in gardens for the first time. Inspiration from a friend in which she does a lot of cut flowers and sells bouquets. She gave me some of her tubers. They're growing very well. And I actually even have one bud so far. So I am beyond ecstatic to see that. This is my Thai chili. It's getting some nice chilies on there. Just waiting for them to turn red. This is a Fresno. And this is a Serrano. Now this Serrano got topped. Uh, actually, this got topped as well by a deer. Which is super strange because deer don't even like peppers. But deer here do. Um, but they're actually flushing out really nice new growth. So I'm happy about that. This is another beast of a zucchini. But I have been getting a lot of zucchini, which is nice. I also have a pot of Cosmos over here. It's funny that they kind of look a little different. They're a little more dainty. Um, so it's kind of neat that I have the same color, but kind of two different kinds. And it also has artichokes still growing. This one isn't as massive as the one over on the other side. Uh, the artichokes are a lot smaller. They're still holding on, but they definitely don't look as good. I'm coming over here just because hey, this is the dinner plate pink so I cannot wait looks like there's a couple blossoms too turkey purple from this angle anyway um, here's what I was talking about the fencing so I actually have this just like flexi black stuff and what I've done is just kind of every day I roll it around my garden and I think it's just enough that it's deterring the deer from coming in but it's also not permanent and pretty easy to like put up so that's what i started using along with still some liquid deer fence because it's smelly and they don't like it my sweet potato vine here looks like it's doing better it got completely mauled away by deer but it seems to be regrowing and rebouncing back so hopefully i'll get some sweet potatoes interested to see that my firecracker pepper, it is putting out some peppers, so we'll keep an eye on that guy. The rest of this is all my pepper bin. I've got, oh, and I also have some really big bulbed onions. So Caleb said he's kind of excited to try and use those. But the peppers are doing really well. I'm harvesting lots of jalapenos. Not as many bell peppers yet, but it's definitely growing some good sized bell peppers. And I have the yellow bells back in this area. They are green at this point in time, but I'm gonna keep them on the, on the plant and see if they do actually turn yellow. This is my yellow squash plant right here. I have exactly one yellow squash. I haven't harvested it yet because it's so small, but this is the thing about growing it in the pots I don't care for. It seems to keep the fruit smaller, the plant smaller, which, you know, is kind of nice because it's not going all over the place, but it's not producing as much. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna continue this experiment again next year. And I think I'm about to lose the plants. I did find a fair amount of squash vine borer eggs on the plants. So I don't think they're actually gonna be around for much longer. This is the zucchini. I think I've gotten a total of like two zucchinis off of it. It looks like there's one that looks okay right now. Again, my peppers. Yeah, that's a nice looking jalapeno. Oh, I just picked it. Right here, I've got two Fresno plants and they are definitely putting on the peppers. I just need to wait for them to turn red. And I have a Serrano here. We'll have two of them. And I've gotten a couple Serranos off of this as well. All right, let's go ahead and come through the middle. So as you can see, the peas are gone, but they are replaced with the Chinese long red noodle beans, which are finally taking off now that the peas are gone to give them space. So I'm really excited to see those. And I have them growing on both sides. This upside obviously a little shorter because it wasn't getting as much sunlight 
as this side, but now with the peas gone, it should help them perk right back up. This side of cucumbers is doing a little better than this side. This is the one that I had grown indoors and then brought it out. It kind of stunted at first, so it wasn't doing as well, but I have gotten, oh, and there's a massive cucumber. I'll have to come back and harvest that. But yeah, I've gotten a couple of cucumbers off of it and it looks like I have one on this side as well that I'm gonna pick that one I'm gonna leave longer. Right next to this side of the, of the cucumbers, I've got a cantaloupe growing, which is also doing pretty well. I haven't seen any fruit yet, any balls, but it's doing pretty well, so I'm happy about that. And on this side, I've got a Kajari melon. I see some little, oops, the leaf's in the way. See some little balls. And this one is extremely prolific. I need to move him because he's taking over where the cucumbers are. So I will do that today. My carrots here, um, they didn't do so well. Again, I didn't thin them out the way I should have, but I'm just letting them go because again, the flowers are really good for pollinators. Bugs really love them. I mean, I have a couple I can tell. You can see the shoulders poking up. So next time I need carrots, I'm gonna go ahead and harvest those. But other than that, most of these have been too tiny. The cherry tomato tunnel though, there is so much fruit all over these vines. I can't even, these should be ready to harvest really soon. I'm just waiting for them to turn a little bit more yellow. I've been picking off cherry tomatoes. I, and this is the purple bumblebee. I pick them off early, that way I don't have to compete with critters over eating them, especially the lower ones. On this side, this is the black cherry. Look how big. I haven't gotten to try, oh, I might get to try one here soon. Oh, that's exciting. What a great garden tour already. And these guys, look at this. They're starting to arc up towards the sun and I think I'm just gonna let them because otherwise I have to top them and I'm not sure if I wanna do that just yet. Oh my gosh, look, I also have the Napa roses. I haven't got to try any of these yet either. Oh man, that's so exciting. I'm gonna have to put my root apron on and come out here and harvest. The alyssum on this side too is absolutely massive. It's loving the amount of moisture here. I did install some drip irrigation. Well, I didn't, Caleb did. It's kind of his pet project. And it is loving the amount of moisture and sunlight. This side is a little lower and it doesn't get as much sunlight, so it's not as big but it's still pretty happy. And I have the strawberry blonde calendula still going here. I did save off some seeds. I took some of the spent pods and saved them off. And here's another good, good spent pod. So I'll probably keep doing that so I don't have to rebuy them. Oh, look at that. See, I am gonna lose them here soon. Look at all those eggs. I'm gonna have to come out here and clean them up. That's the weird thing about zucchini, is they're so prolific that you get tired of them, but they also are susceptible to squash vine borers so much that you lose them. My strawberry bucket here, it looks like it's got some like black spot, so I think I need to treat that as well, but it is doing pretty well. I did save off some runners. I do need to clip them here soon, and actually looks like they are growing in the ground themselves and I think I'm just gonna let that happen. I don't really see why not. So this green stock, which is my flower green stock, I most of the things in here were seeds. The only things that weren't seeds were like the strawberries here. I had a bucket from uh, Walmart. It was the Proven Winners uh, Buried Treasure. The flowers are a nice, a nice pink. But anyway, they sold the bucket for like $12 and it had like eight strawberry plants in it. I let it go for a while just to like try the fruit from there. And they just were not happy in that bucket. So I finally separated them. I think I lost two of the plants, which to me isn't that bad considering you can buy strawberry plants for anywhere between three to $5, at least that I found. So I got several plants 
And the nice thing is these will be perennial, so they'll come back year after year in this green stock. I'm letting them flower because I ripped off the flowers the first time, so I'm hoping they're established enough that I can try some of the fruit. Otherwise, I've got a nice, fun mix of flowers in here. Like this is a torch flower. This is a lavender with some snapdragons. I'm not actually sure what that is. Zinnias, snapdragons. This is a Rebecca. I believe these are bachelor buttons, which are doing so much better compared to the ones I have out front. Got some Cosmos, like that set's really tall. And I did, I did prune them. So that's just the in-between growth. More zinnias. I believe this is a borage. It looks not great. So a bunch of strawberries. This looks like bachelor buttons too. More zinnia. Another torch flower. This looks like calendula, which I'm hoping is the ivy princess then because I haven't seen that one yet. Some alyssum. Not actually sure. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm really excited to see more things start blooming. I just come out and spin it every day or so. Anyway, so that is my massive vegetable garden. And as you can tell, I am extremely happy of the progress being made over here. Coming up this way, we'll go ahead and do an overview of my patio. This is starting to fill in nicely. Some of the leaves are still in rough shape from that hailstorm, but I've left them on for now. I'm gonna get some pretty little blossoms here. Oh, well, <laughs> looks like some of them got eaten. Oh well. My mandevella is actually finally gonna bloom. This is a plant I overwintered and brought it out with my rubber tree. Over here to this pot, Another pot of Cosmos. This is the apricot lemonade variety. Very cute, very pretty. And the other thing I found that is really cool is little yellow finch birds actually sit here and they eat the seeds directly out of the seed heads. So that's been kind of fun to have like a built-in bird feeder. I've got gomfrina in here, the bubblegum petunias. I've got the euphorbia here and there's still a salvia in here, but it's pretty shadowed out by everything else. So I'm not sure I'm gonna see any more blooms from it. These little violas are still kicking. They're so cute, so bouncy, pretty happy with those. Miss Cherry Tree is doing well. I've got a hot pink Caitlin's Joy Dahlia growing here. It's a little smaller. Again, I don't think it gets as much sunlight. There's a zinnia here. Some uh, marigolds. My goodness, I forgot the name for a second. I've got this hosta. It did actually bloom. I've got one stargazer lily that hasn't been eaten by the deer yet. So I'm hoping to actually get to see that. My lavender is done for the season. Another hosta, smaller because it gets more sunlight. So as soon as the cherry tree starts providing more shade, it'll do better. This zinnia is about to bloom and I'm not sure which kind it is. I sowed a couple seeds, one came up, so we'll see. And the other hot pink Caitlin's Joy. It's also small. I think it also doesn't get as much sunlight as it probably deserves. And then all around I have marigolds. Here's a little section of pots. So I have a stevia here. This is a lemon basil. I kind of just let it grow and flower because I was hoping the, the citrus smell would help with any bugs. And I've got a beautiful little pineapple shade, or sage, not shade. <laughs> this is a pot again of snapdragons. I've got the black prince and the apple blossoms. And this is actually a geranium somebody gave me. And then this pot got pretty devastated by deer. It got eaten down pretty much, uh, specifically the hibiscus. Now it's definitely coming back. It looks like it's going to actually bloom, got new leaves, but it used to be the star of the show and now it's kind of overshadowed, but I figure it's still a really nice, beautiful full pot, so it's fine. The sweet potatoes obviously recovered very well. 
these lantanas decided to pick up the slack and have been putting on a beautiful strawberry banana show. This bacopa, I had no idea they were so vigorous. I had no idea it was going to take over this much, and I love it. But it is kind of shutting out my little peachy keen verbenum. It is not able to keep up. But, oh well. Otherwise, it's a very beautiful full pot. My herbs over here. So the cilantro, obviously done. Too hot. I'm letting it go to seeds so I can harvest the seeds. You can see all the little hoverflies around. They love the little flowers. So that's good. My basil is doing quite well. I do need to deadhead it a bit. I did prune a bunch to make basil. The amethyst basil is actually not doing great. I lost several of the plants. I don't know if it just doesn't get enough sunlight uh, because it's kind of tucked back here and overshadowed by everything else. But I still have at least a little. This parsley, I think it finally did flower. I ripped out the center hoping to prolong it a little further. But I have still been eating it, which is nice. Lemon thyme. Oh, it looks like I've got a little blossom. And a volunteer sunflower, of course. This is the rest of my thyme, which you can tell I've used quite a few of this. This is the tarragon. The oregano looks rough. I think it doesn't get enough sunlight. Same with my rosemary. I think since I kind of have it in this corner, it's not doing great. But I really like the way it looks. So I'm just leaving it like that for this year the dill was a nice beautiful show it is gone to seed at least most of it and i'm gonna probably cut that head and collect those seeds and my sage this guy is actually doing well but he looks rough because the chipmunk keeps coming in here and digging right in this area and that's why he's really dirty this is a weed that i've let go because I just want to see what it is. <laughs> Caleb's like, as soon as that thing flowers, I'm cutting it down. I'm like, whatever. Anyway, so that is my patio. And, oh, I forgot. Here's the portulaca. This is the one I bought this year that is a yellow. And it's got, like, pink in the middle. It's really cute. All right, so let's go take a look over at the shed then. I'm not sure how or why... Um, these petunias are still doing okay, but they are. I've got a mix of petunias and violas, so I'm just letting them go. This side, not as much. And it also has the same one of those weeds that's on the patio that I just let it go. This pot over here is also not doing very great. So I think I'm having an issue with some sort of copper fungus, or some sort of fungus. So I bought the copper fungicide and I've been spraying. It seems to have at least slowed down on my milkweed, but you can see my milkweed lost all of its leaves, which is kind of a bummer because I was really excited to grow some milkweed this year. So hopefully it bounces back. Sunflower, same thing. I did have one get topped by deer, but the rest of them, hopefully they get the flower before whatever's going on takes them over because they should be all different fun colors. This is a pot of mint. I've got my cactus. This is another pot of mint, but this is all chocolate mint and some lemon mint that I usually grow just for the flowers. Here's more of the portulaca I bought this year. Oh, here's a flower. That's what it looks like. I think it's really cute. This basket is also in really rough shape. First of all, the birds keep eating this so it's not holding in the moisture the way it should because it's just running out and drying out the soil. The dichondra is apparently extremely unhappy with that, which again is a bummer because I thought it'd be really cool to have, I mean, it is draping. It's just not doing as well as it, it usually would for me. I've got some cosmos up here, really pretty, but super attractant for aphids and some strawberry blonde calendula and some alyssum, which isn't happy because it keeps drying out, but I'm just gonna leave it for this year. I've got this lantana here, which is so beautiful. I'm glad that this recovered because I thought it was gonna die on me. I also have some random squashes here and a Chinese four marble, which I don't really know how that happened, but the rest of this junk 
is um, compost, things that I keep cutting down or whatever. I bring it down here because I try to offer it as sacrifice to the deer and the bunny. So hopefully they leave the rest of my garden alone. The last bit of garden I'm gonna show today is my pollinator side garden, the pollination station that I created this year. As you can see, it's got a lot of weeds. I'm planning on coming in here and weed whacking this down. Uh, we wanna turn this into a riverbed at some point, like with rocks, but I just, we didn't wanna do that yet this year because we gotta dig it out a little bit to help spoil the water. So anyway, on to the plants. We have this yarrow, which is finally about to bloom. That's gonna be really great. I still have the saglothras. I've got, those are supposed to be black irises. Those were a purple iris, a native one. These were a small purple flag iris. Still don't know what this guy is, but he actually seems much, much happier over here. This is actually a patch of purple irises, but whoever, pulled them out, gave me another plant. I think this is Adgeradium. Probably saying that really wrong. Adgeradium, I don't know. It's really cute though. So I'm kind of happy, happy accident there. This is some Alyssum. My Limelight Hydrangea. She is bloomed and in her glory. Look how beautiful. What I am worried about though, is there's a lot of browning and the wind sweeps down here and has basically windswept her forward. So I have a couple branches I've pulled up. Um, I'm wondering if the wind is damaging it or something. So hopefully I can figure that out. This looks really rough. It just needs some water, but this is a transplanted bees, bees, uh, bee weed. Sorry, couldn't think of it. So it's recently transplanted, which is why it looks so rough. And this is the lithrope grass. It is coming back, so hopefully that'll be pretty. And it came with something else that I, I don't know what it is yet. This is a straw flower that also looks extremely rough. Hopefully it does okay. A daylily bloomed, some coleus. This is a milkweed that is absolutely covered with aphids. So hopefully some ladybugs come in here soon. This Gerber Daisy, I think, is recovering, thankfully. This is a Lily of the Valley that's pink. This is my Pink Wands Flamingo Celosia. It's funny because they have this, like, fused blossom over here. I don't know if something nipped it and they grew together or what's going on. I also think this is a plant. I just don't know what. And then also there's this thing that looks not great, but... There's a couple weeds in here too, which I need to reweed. but again, this looks like a weed and it's absolutely covered with these red aphids, which I'm like, hey, if this weed's gonna be a trap crop and protect the rest of my plants, so be it. Because underneath is a couple little poppies, which actually look like they're gonna bloom. That is a zinnia and my spedwell is putting out some more blossoms, I think. If I come in here and deadhead it, perhaps it will bloom more. That is a Rubecchia, some extra sage. Here is the other section of bachelor buttons I transplanted. And at least they're doing a little better. Got to see the blossoms, so this must be the black boy. There was also an artistic mix. That might be the artistic mix. So hopefully they'll self-seed and come back. Some more straw flowers that look pretty good. So that's great. And an artichoke. These are some pollinator plants that I transplanted recently. This is a Coreopsis, which the bugs still really like, which is good. I don't know what all's in here. I just kind of left the patch together. Black Mondo grass, I've got two of those. Some more straw flowers. A nice Gomfrina. This is a gonfrina that got eaten down pretty low, so it's finally bouncing back and looks really cute. This gonfrina is doing even better. This Rosa Sharon is doing well. Looks like I'm gonna finally get some flowers here soon. And a bunch of sunflowers from a chipmunk ringing it. More straw flowers. Looks like I might be getting a flower soon. And more straw flowers. These artichokes are doing pretty well. 
really hoping they actually shoot out an artichoke because I really want to see the flower. Another Rebecca. Look, here's a cream peony poppy. How pretty is that? This is a peony I planted, and this must be a dandelion. I'm just going to pull that really quick. So I bought this from the flower show. I didn't know if it would come up or not. Looks like it is. Probably will look poopy, but oh well. My little rose bush that I bought, it looks like it's pushing out new growth. So that's good. Maybe I'll get some cute little roses. Zinnia. More pollination stuff I just left together. I don't remember what this is. It might have been penstemon, beer tongue penstemon, I believe. But it's done blooming for now. This is another plant that I already forgot. And I really should label my things. This is that clearance thrip I got. <laughs> this <laughs> is a bunch of gourds. Um, when I dumped compost under here before I made the garden bed, I think it contained a lot of pumpkin and squash seeds. So that has taken over, but I, there's something about how full and lovely it is that I can't get rid of it. But it is swallowing the pink celosia from over here. It's swallowing my milkweed. And I don't even know if there's anything else hidden in there. Another Rebecca, some more straw flowers that aren't doing as great. This is another Coreopsis, it should be pink. So I'm excited for that. Some more pollinator stuff I recently transplanted. This is a Rose Campion, doing really well. This pot's doing well of this fun petunia, sweet potato vine and gomfrina. This is an Agastache. I love it. Very cute. Another Zinnia. I don't know what that is, but it was cute little yellow flowers. My native hibiscus, my native hardy hibiscus, is about to shoot off some blossoms. So that's going to be really beautiful. Recently transplanted butterfly weed. Again, just needs some water, so I'm really actually hoping it does rain. Another set of straw flowers. It looks like I might actually get a flower here soon. This is another th um, plant from my pollinator thing. It just shoots out these cute little white flowers. So I don't know what it is, but it's pretty. My crepe myrtle is doing really well. It does look like it's got some, some damage though. That might be mealy worms. So I might need to come in and address that. I don't know what this is yet. It, I'm hoping it does flower here soon. I've got a random sunflower and some dill. And I've got three lavenders. This is supposed to be Shasta daisies. It did head up and I can't pull it out so it is rooted in. So I'm just kind of leaving it because hopefully it'll die back and then come back next year. Looks like another random sunflower. More straw flowers. And look at my purple fountain grass. It's not as big as I was hoping it would get, but it is really pretty. That's gonna be really nice for some fall interest in this garden. And I have a couple leftover peppers over here. I've got a jalapeno back here, which is doing quite well. It did have some fruit on it, there it is. I haven't harvested anything yet. I've got a bell pepper here that has some peppers on it. This one doesn't look too good. The weird thing is though, with my vegetable garden, the deer topping off some of the peppers over there, I mean, these look perfectly fine. They're not anywhere barely protected and I'm <laughs> not going after these, so I don't understand. And then I have a cucamelon that self-sowed from last year and was coming up in my other garden bed which I didn't want because it's super vigorous um, but it took the transplantation pretty well so I need to get a big trellis and I'm gonna let that go because it'll be fun anyway so that is my pollinator side garden that I put together this year I am super happy with how it's filling out, how it's looking. I'm so excited to see this progress. I'm hoping this will be like a wild 
garden full of natives and pollinator friendly plants and all of that because I think it'll just be really good and it'll add a lot of color to my life. <laughs> Thanks for watching.